What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to show you what could cause your car to overheat, the simple issues that can be fixed, and then the major issues that you would need to either bring to a shop or if you can do it yourself, do it yourself. So the best way to know if your car is overheating, there will be a uh, temperature gauge on your dashboard. Obviously the newer models you gotta go through all these settings to find it, but for like older models like my car here, it it's right there, you can see it. So it should be normally in the normal. If it's anywhere above, like past that line, that's when your engine is overheating because of something. I've had the issue with one of my other cars I used to have. It was normally always a coolant hose, which is sometimes the case because they break, they're just rubber. So something can cut it or it just gets too hard to where it just snaps over age. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys some stuff that could cause your engine to overheat. So the first two things that can cause your engine to overheat are all in the same area, which I'm not going to touch because I just drove the car and the engine is hot. But it's either your thermostat or your thermostat housing, which is that big block right there. That's what a thermostat is. Your thermostat could um, close up, get stuck which will cause coolant to not flow through correctly or go in at all. And the coolant is what keeps your engine at the temperature it is supposed to be at. And without that coolant running through properly, it will mess up. And the housing is just to protect the thermostat and keep the coolant from going in. As I said, hoses could cause an issue. They could break or they're just wore out, you know, stuff like that. So that is something else to look for. That's one of the more easier things to, wor to not worry about that much because you can easily order one online or buy one from a auto store and literally just undo it, put a new one in, and you're done. So the thermostat is another thing that's cheap to buy, but depends on where it's located. Mine is located pretty easily, but other models could be different depending on what car you have. Okay, next thing is your radiator. Radiator is what you need to make your engine cooler. And then you have your cooling fan as well, which could also be a factor as well. If your cooling fan isn't moving properly, it could cause your engine to overheat because it is not cooling your engine off with air. Radiator is another thing. You need to have that. It cannot be broken. Mine, as you can see, is a little bit wore out. I will probably have to get a new one soon. But as long as it is keeping my engine cool, that is all that matters. Radiators can go between 100 and up, depending on what model of car you have. Some cars off, offer uh, metal instead of plastic radiators, which last longer and are more durable. Most cases, your car will not offer that. Only ones that offer that is mostly German cars because they're expensive. Radiator fans can, are in the same boat for pricing, depending on your model. Everything depends on your model. The more expensive you are, the car you have, the more expensive it's going to be. The more cheap car you have, the more cheaper it's going to be because that car is just cheap. Like Hondas, for example. You can pretty much buy anything from a Honda for dirt cheap because they're Hondas. They're reliable and everybody has them. But yes, those are two other things that you should watch out for if your engine is overheating. Another simple thing is your uh, coolant reservoir. That can leak if it's cracked anything like that very easy to fix for most part it's kind of just plug and play these are fairly cheap i've never had to buy one because none of mine have broken i'm not sure on the pricing of what it would be this would probably be like 40 bucks because it's small it's not that big and this car isn't that popular by any means so depending on your car it will cost you know a pretty penny if not it's very cheap like mine would be so I think the focus when I had it, I thought it was that one time, looked it up, it was like 50 bucks, never got it though because it was a hose the entire time. Like I said, hoses are mostly the common thing to make your engine overheat because it's just leaking and leaking and leaking, which is what I had happen to me. And I didn't realize, and I just kept dumping money and money and money into coolant bottles and going through them like three a day, which is not what you want to deal with so that is another thing that could uh cause your engine to overheat 
Another way some, that your engine can overheat is your water pump, which you cannot see on mine because it is underneath all the way down there. If you take off my wheel, then you can see it because Ford decided to make a little door to where you can work on that area if you have to replace anything. So that is another thing that can overheat your, your car. The way you can know if it is that is if it is leaking coolant out of the water pump. It will be cracked. You will see it. Coolant is either green or orange or whatever other colors they have. If you see any color, it is probably your water pump if you know where your water pump is. Water pumps, again, depend on your car. Can be pricey or not pricey. It's 40 bucks for mine because it's literally it's not cheap, it's not expensive at all for this car. This engine is literally a tiny ass engine. So finding parts for this car for engine wise is not that hard. Finding everything else is hard. But um that's something else that can make your engine overheat. You do not want your engine to overheat because if it gets too hot to an extreme, it will cause problems. Believe me, most cars, they'll kind of just, they'll just stop. They won't really do anything. It will kind of just tell you, and then you can only go to a certain speed. I think it's called limp mode, but older cars, they don't give a shit. They will just keep going. But if you see that temperature gauge go up, you have to slow down and stop. Do not try to make it home because it's, it's just going to keep happening and happening. It's best to stop, look and see if you can see if anything is wrong. Anything that is wrong with your car that could cause it to overheat. I'm only going through the common problems. I'm not going to the extreme, but those are mostly what you are looking at. There can also be sensors too, like I have over here. That piece that is broken, if I can zoom in, that is as far as I can zoom in. But uh, this right here, I already bought one and look, it already broke. That is what controls my fan. So what happened is, if the fan's not kicking at the right speed, my coolant reservoir will start to bubble and coolant will come out because it's too hot. Now, obviously you do not want to open this or your coolant reservoir because then your coolant is just going to go all the way in the air. You do not want that at all, especially with your oil too. You don't want that to happen. Too hot, it needs to cool down. But, um, yeah, those are some of the, uh, issues that you will have with, um, overheating. So, for a bit of look of the 2.2 Mazda engine, here you go. This is what, uh, all the Fords were in besides the V6 version, which was slower than the, uh, turbo version of my car. But, yeah, that is, uh, not, not that long of a video. I just wanted to cover something basic that um, some people would like to probably learn to do themselves. I will probably go over how to replace your valve cover uh, gasket seal or whatever. I've already done it, but I will show you the process of how to do it. Could be different from, you know, the type of car you got. But um, yeah, that is all I got. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.